<laughs> All right. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, you can be seated now. Thank you so much. And um, I so much prefer having lapel, so we'll go ahead and get right into the Word. All right now. I've been talking about uh, for, this is I think part two in this series, and on Wednesday evenings, we're really focusing on faith and how to walk by faith and how to live by faith and the just shall live by faith and we're saved by faith through grace and we receive the promises of God by faith. God is a faith God. God's always in the now. Now faith is. So we have to get into the position where when we pray, we believe we receive what God promised. And uh, we receive it when we pray, so we count it done after, after prayer. You know, you only pray the, the prayer of faith one time. You thank God until it happens after that. There's other certain prayers that you, you, you would be praying on a daily basis. How, how, th- uh, prayers like this, nevertheless, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. Prayer of consecration and dedication. There's all kinds of prayers, but I know one thing. How many, how many could serve a God that meets all your needs? How many does serve a God who meets all your needs? Yeah, and tonight I could tell that, that Vic was working on his patience. <laughs> and because through faith and patience, what? You don't know that scripture? You better get to know that scripture. Through faith and patience, you inherit the promises of God. See, once, once you receive a promise of God through faith, through the prayer of faith, the fight begins. The good fight of faith. It's really a war of words. It's a war in your mind. And we're not going to let the devil mess with our mind. And we're not going to let the fig tree mess with our head. Let me give you a little background on this, and, and we'll make some good progress tonight. I'm just going to summarize Mark chapter 11, 1 through 11. We're not going to read the verses. I'm just going to bring you to an awareness of context. But several days, we, we see these um, uh, recorded in all four Gospels here. And several days before the crucifixion, Jesus is entering into Jerusalem. He's welcomed by the people as the Messiah who will free them from Roman rule and sin. And Jesus enters in on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy and symbolizing peace, a peaceful nature of his first coming. And by riding the donkey, Jesus demonstrated to himself to be a peaceful king, prophetic king, servant king, saving king. And I thank God I love him and he loves me. And I love him because he first loved me. And there's, there's you know, you have, we have to realize every single day, a day does not go by, God wants you to know he loves you. Right where you are, unconditional love. It doesn't matter what you find yourself involved in or what you've done, good or bad, just thank God he loves us unconditionally. Now, we don't stay in that position uh, of something negative. We just run to God that's not a run away from him. That's right, right to him when, when, he, when we mess up or we step over the boundary of love. Come on now. How many have ever stepped over your heart uh, just knowing you said something that was on the edge and you acted like you didn't say it? You know, and, and my wife's pretty good at letting me know when I went over the edge. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, just the other day, I forget what we were talking about. But uh, I went over the edge on something, and my heart said, whoops, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have said that. It, again, it's not demeaning. It's not dishonorable. It's just, you know what, uh, we should be able to have a sensitive conscience and know before we make something happen, we better know what we're going to make happen through our words. All right, thanks for helping me out there. You just <laughs> leave me all alone. All right, so Mark 11, getting back down to Mark 11, we'll read 12 through 14. In the Amplified, it says, on the day following, and again, I want you to know what was following. So when they had come from Bethany, he, he, Jesus, was hungry. And seeing in the distance a fig tree, he, which were covered with fig, uh, leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. So he saw leaves. So what's he thinking? He saw, yeah, and he was hungry. The word said he was hungry. He saw some leaves, and, and he was getting ready to eat some fruit. So uh, we see that again. He, could find, he couldn't find any fruit on it when he finally arrived. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves, but there was no fruit. And, and we could see here that the fruit or the purpose of the fig tree was to grow fruit. It wasn't fulfilling its purpose. 
But this tree failed, and Jesus said that the tree would never have any fruit again, so the tree couldn't do its work for God anymore. Are we ready to do God's work? Are we ready to do God's work? No matter what anybody else is doing, I'm going to fulfill the will of God for my life. My wife and I are right in the middle of the perfect will of God for our life, the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. There's no place like the perfect will of God. There just isn't. And thank God uh, you know what I'm talking about. We'll, we'll go back down to uh, the scripture here. And it goes on to say, but when he came up to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the fig season had not come yet. And he said to it, no one ever is going to eat from you again. And his disciples listened. See, Jesus saw leaves. He wanted fruit. And all he heard the tree say, no fruit for you today. Lack. You're going to do without Come on, does your, again, please understand, I'm talking humorously, uh, but how many know sometimes your checkbook talks to you when you open it up? <laughs> Leaves are here. <laughs> no, no. But, uh, you know, so sometimes when, um, you know, you're believing God for something and all of a sudden it seems like the enemy will try to use people to get to you to say, you're not going to get that. Have you ever been believing God for something and someone comes up and say, what is wrong with you? You look like death-eating crackers. Well, that's encouraging. And, and you, know, th- you know, those aren't the kind of friends you want to probably hang around with. Yeah, I might look like death-eating crackers, but I'm just going to keep believing God and put a smile on them and just thank God for peace and realize that the walk with God is not tiptoeing through the tulips every single day, but we win. <laughs> but we win. <laughs> Y'all look like a bunch of winners tonight. <laughs> All right? I've talked to a bunch of winners tonight because you know and we're learning and being reminded how to walk the walk at the lifestyle of faith, which is the victory that overcomes the world. So anyway, he came up to the tree. He found nothing but leaves for the fig season had not come yet. And he said to it, he didn't think to it, he said to it. So if he said something to it, it must have said something to him. Now, do fig trees talk? no. But again, they, they're, a thought comes to your mind of what you see, and the enemy, you know what? He's trying to get you off the word, so he's going he's gonna to say exactly what he wants you to see so that you get your eyes off of the victory and onto the problem and onto the lack or onto what you don't have, and, and, and instead of looking at the word of God about what God has said you have in the form of a promise or in the form of truth that you believe you received when you prayed, and you said, thank God I've got it now, Right? So uh, you, we, have to, we have to walk in freedom and, and uh, believe in freedom no matter how we feel, no matter how temptation comes. We're not going to let the fig tree mess with our mind. We're not going to let the fig tree get into our head. We're not going to let that challenge, that habit, that lack, that whatever you might be facing mess with our mind. We're going to keep on the word, right? All right. So... The disciples heard him say to the fig tree, no one ever again shall eat from you. And his disciples were listening to what he said. And in the morning when they were passing along, they noticed that the fig tree was withered completely away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, look, Master, the fig tree which you doomed has withered away. And Jesus said, And he replied, he said to them, have faith in God, or I've just displayed the God kind of faith right in front of you. I've just, I've described the God kind of faith right in front of you, which we need to display, and the Word of God says in the Amplified, have faith in God constantly. Display the God kind of faith constantly, no matter what we see, no matter what we feel. God's Word, again, is forever settled, and that's our, that's, that's like the, um, on a compass, north. If you want to go true north, you've got to follow the compass. If you want to go true, true truth, we've got to see the compass of the Word of God. And, and, and if you start veering off, you say, wait a minute, north is that way. So we go ahead and readjust. And that's why my wife and I say often, you know, our walk with God is so daily. So daily. If we're going to keep a now faith to walk in victory and fresh uh, victory. We have to be listening to something daily, and we need to be uh, hearing the Word of God daily, and we need to be dealing with our thought life. 
and not let the fig tree get into our head. The word says constantly, now faith, fresh faith, the God kind of faith is put on display. And then Mark eleven twenty three 23 happens, you know, have faith in God constantly. Here's the way God, the God kind of faith operates. He goes on to say, you know what, you think that's impressive. Jesus said, truly, I'm going to tell you now something. Whoever says to the mountain, I'm not going around talking to trees, but I'm going around talking to lack, because God, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm a tither and a giver, and I'm a good steward, and I have a budget, and I live within my means. See, I love to preach on prosperity, but you forfeit prosperity if you're not a good steward. Uh, people got mad at me before, said, so just, just speak debt cancellation over my life. I said, I'm not going to do that. Even if I could, I wouldn't because you don't have any control of your credit card. Yeah, this is awesome. Don't let the fig tree mess with your mind. Jesus said, truly I say unto you, you can read along with me if you want to, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will take place and it will be done for him. The King James mentions three times speaking to the fig tree and one time believing with your heart. That Hagen taught us it really takes three times teaching on the power of our words that is like a rudder to our life and it does just believing with our heart. We need to be reminded what we say is important. We need to be reminded death and life are in the power of the tongue. We need to be reminded that even though we, we could vent on someone, we better get into now faith, otherwise we're delaying our answer. We can't blame it on God. We can't blame it on the devil. We're going to stay in faith no matter what and fight the good fight of faith and we're going to win. All right. So, have you ever been disappointed? <laughs> if anybody's ever been disappointed about something you thought was producing uh, leaves and the fruit was right there, but it wasn't when you came up on it, how many would say, yeah, that's me? Have you ever? See, I don't like to raise my hand in church. Well, come on, tonight you do just yes or no. Yes, we all have. Thank you. Thank you for waving at me. I got you. Um, it wasn't what it looked like. It um, wasn't what you thought it would be. Uh, looks can be deceiving. Anybody find that out? Uh, uh, big, but fruit never lies. Never lies. I'll say that again. Looks can be deceiving, but fruit never lies. Let me say it again. F um, looks can be deceiving. Fruit never lies. I don't have to take a lot of time around you to find out what you are and what you are, you know, what kind of person you are and, and, and what's in your heart, because out of the heart, the mouth, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So a great lesson we can learn about people is that every tree is known by its fruit over time, over time, over time, over time. You, you might see this guy or girl or whatever, and you, you believe in uh, for, for someone good to come into your life and you know, they act right for about a week or two, and you close you get to them. I don't care how good looking they are, they just become ugly. But then, I mean, there, but there is, uh, we're standing in agreement with some folks, singles and in our ministry and who we know. We're standing in agreement for the right person to come into their life. They're going to be the real deal. Yeah. And you're going to like the way they look, and you're going to like the way they act. And they love Jesus more than they love you. All right, and they're going to break up with you, or you're going to break up with them to find out how much they truly do love Jesus. <laughs> See if they come to church because of you, or they're going to come to church no matter what you do. Boy, I'm enjoying this message tonight. So how did Jesus handle deception? He saw leaves, expected truth. When, when, when something was supposed to produce that he was expecting, he tried to get into his head. There should have been provision there, but it wasn't what it seemed. How did Jesus handle deception? How did Jesus handle disappointment? He said. He said. Anything contrary to the Word of God is, is just not going to be good for you. 
Anything contrary to the word of God in the form of a thought trying to come to your mind to try to dispossess you of something you already believed you received when you prayed. The enemy's after your words. The enemy's after your thoughts. And what do we have to do? Notice that Jesus didn't say, whosoever shall think unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he thinks shall have whatsoever he thinks. No, thinking, we have, to, we have to renew our mind on the Word of God every single day, but we need to get it into our heart, and whatever lies coming against us, speaking the truth to that lack is like speaking truth to that fig tree. It's cursed. The next day, I don't care what you see, you know that the roots are being dealt with right now. The disciples saw only a fig tree that looked and it appeared alive when Jesus said, you're doomed. But something happened when Jesus released words of faith out of his mouth. Listen, no wonder why fig trees are cursed by Jesus speaking the word of God, because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and everything that was created on this earth was created with words. Do you know dirt was created with words? I mean, just this whole world was created with words. And God said, and it was so, the law of Genesis. And God said, and it was so, and God said, it was so. And in the beginning, you remember when uh, there, there was a whole uh, mess up in the beginning, and, and God, uh, by the Holy Spirit, was hovering over the face of the earth, and, and he was seeing everything without form and void, but what did he, and darkness covered the whole earth. What did he say, though? He saw darkness, but he said, light be. He saw things out of chaos, in chaos and disorder, and he brought order to disorder, order the chaos through speaking words of God. I'm telling you, this, when I, long t- you know, many years ago, it's all, this, new, this message is fresh to me. And again, if any part of the Word of God isn't fresh to you, it's not real to you. We need to get fresh revelation, fresh insight, and, and keep our f- faith fresh. So Jesus responded to the fig tree. He s- said to it. He spoke words to it. Lack and disappointment were trying to get into his head, but he didn't let it get into his head because he spoke, spoke words from his heart out of his mouth. You don't think the word to come to pass. You get it in your heart, and you speak what God said about your situation. He watches over the word to perform it because God's word's quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. You can't hum lies from the enemy out of your mind. You can't just inside saying, I'm not thinking about you. I'm not thinking about you. I'm not thinking about you. But why? You know. so, so, yes, you need to speak words, faith words, Get it in your heart. Speak it out of your mouth. You can't think wrong words away. You have to speak wrong words away. So in, the, in, in just a moment, I'm just, this is something that helped me when I first heard this. Is on, I'm going to count like to three. And you begin to count from one to a hundred in your mind. Don't say it. Just, just, just put all you can into uh, just counting from one to one hundred in your mind. Are you ready? Ready? One, two, three, go. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Keep counting. As you're counting in your mind, say with me from your heart. You counting? What number are you on, by the way? 58. Good Lord, you skipping numbers? You counting by twos? Good. All right, well, hang in there. Don't, don't rush my illustration. So, um, but come on, keep, keep, keep counting, keep counting, keep counting. As you're counting in your mind, I want you to repeat after me and, and really put your heart into it. Are you counting in your mind? All right, now keep counting. Say it with me in Jesus' name. Fig tree, you shut your mouth up. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I'm a tither and I'm a giver. I walk under the open windows of heaven. He's pouring us out, blessing us. There's not room enough to receive it. Come on now, what number are you on? 
You can't think thoughts away. You got to get God's word in your heart and speak the word of God, which is powerful, and it drives those negative thoughts away. That'll save your life right there, right there. Come on, did you get that? Did you get that? The enemy's trying to mess with your mind. He's trying to mess with your vision. He's trying to me- and the only way to get wrong thoughts of your mind is get the right thoughts in your heart, God's word in your heart, and out of your mouth. Now, the world doesn't understand this principle. I mean, they, they say, oh, they're just name it, claim it, blab it, grab it. Well, that's what Jesus was. I'm not claiming and naming it and blabbing it and grabbing it anyway. I'm just speaking the word of God. What God said goes, and I believe it. And we watch those word to perform it. Don't let the fig tree mess with your mind anymore. Has anything been messing with your mind lately? Come on, let's take the authority of the word of God and the authority of the name of Jesus and overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. Well, don't just, don't say this tonight because I'm just a depressed type person. That's just who I am. I always have been. Oh boy, you better start letting that fig tree speak mess with your mind, because you, this is a new day. Let's get that word in our heart, speak it out of our mouth, because that's the way of God. Are you going to patty clap? Might as well do it loud. Come on, just go ahead. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm so kidding. That sort of felt good, though. All right. So because the fig tree was withered, it didn't have a voice anymore. Uh, last time I was talking about, there was a whole war of words between Daniel and Goliath. And the only way that giant stopped is when he cut that giant's head off. Had no voice anymore. And he ran at the enemy with his mouth open. And what God said it was going to happen. And, and he acted on what he said. I'm sure his knees were knocking. Man, I saw a picture of the, the um, largest beautiful horse in the whole world. I mean, it dwarfed men. I mean, here's like, well, I'm not a horse. But anyway, I mean, but people were like at, right here on that horse. It's pretty intimidating. Who's going to take that horse for a walk? I volunteer you. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's not be messed with in our mind. Let's control the situation with what God says about it. Thank God for the word, right? Thank God because the fig tree was withered. It didn't have a voice in Jesus' life anymore. That's the power of the spoken word of God. John 8, 31 and 32, we know the scripture says, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you're truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you're going to know the truth and the truth will set you free. Don't let your fig tree turn into a forest. Respond with the word. Oh, man. The the more we renew our mind on the word and keep that word in our heart, the, the quicker we can respond to a lie. And it's so much easier to respond to a lie coming out of our mind when it's just in the form of a thought. Because if we don't cast down thoughts, then all of a sudden it begins to build strongholds in our mind. And you know what? The opposite can happen if we will just let the Word of God in our mind and build a strong force, a fortress of truth in our mind, and we're, not, we're going to guard our mind, we're going to stay behind that fortress, and we're going to speak the truth of God's Word and keep protected. We love the, the, the Scripture on Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the, uh, on the shadow of the Almighty. And what? I will think of the Lord. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him I will trust. You don't just think about, oh, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful that Jesus is my protector. Yeah, it is, but we got to say the Word of God over the matter. And also, you know what? There's another qualification of walking in the of divine protection in the Word of God. Later on down in the scripture, it says that, and I will keep you in all of your ways of obedience and service. Obedience and service. Obedience and service. We expose ourselves to the enemy's attack when we break the the hedge of protection by going and seeking out other things other than the will of God. 
Solomon was the most wise person on the face of this earth, but then there was a season in his life, he tried out everything if it it would just satisfy him. He he tried everything. You You wouldn't even want to imagine things. And only God and his will and his ways brought him peace and peace, peace. It's time to deal with any of our fig trees here tonight and moving forward. Anything in life that you have been through that's trying to get into your head, deal with it. And really, you know, I, I, we have relationships with some counselors, and sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll say, hey, if you need to go to a counselor, go. Because they, a lot of times they will give you tools as to how to, to, to handle some things along the thought life. And really, if you study their principles, it's really, when it's taught right, it's really aligned with the Word of God. So, if you don't feel or if you don't deal with your fig tree, it has the potential of producing bad fruit in your life for the rest of your life. James 1.22, in Amplified, says, But be ye doers of the word, obey the message, and not merely listeners to it, betraying yourself into deception by reasoning, what? Contrary to the truth. Don't reason contrary to the truth. Because the enemy's trying to come at you in the form of a thought that's a lie. And boy, if he could just get you thinking on that lie long enough, he can get you in the realm of reason. And when he gets you into the realm of reason, he is trying to build strongholds of lies in your mind that can only be overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of renewing our mind on the Word of God every single day. And I say, man, that's some, I just want, God's sovereign. I just want him to do everything. What, but, but God tells us some things to do. Sometimes we call ourselves waiting on, hey, God, it's your move. And God's saying, no way. Whosoever shall say. I already gave you my word that I said. Now you get it in your heart and you say it. Just think about the power of God's words in your heart and your mouth. It's like sicking God on the situation. It is. John 1, we, we, we know that scripture. But verse 23 in James, get back there. For if anyone, if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it and doing the word, being a doer of it, he's like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he's like. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, and faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not heedless listeners who forgets, but is an active doer. Come on, say it with me. I'm an active doer. I'm hearing the word. I'm learning the principles. I'm going to apply the principles. This, you know, the word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added to you. But if you look at that in the Amplified, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, his way of doing, and his way of being right. His ways are not the world's ways. His ways, it it just, they work though. (laughs) We have to renew our mind. The word says be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So that when you're renewed in the spirit of your mind, your mind can receive truth a whole lot better than having a bunch of, you know, someone who doesn't take care of their lawn or they hadn't cleaned their garage out for 75 years or, you know, it's all cluttered up. It's, it's hard. Keep our mind fresh and clean and clear. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it and perseveres in looking into it, being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys, he shall be blessed in his doing, his life of obedience. He'll be blessed. How do we face disappointment? How do we face deception? How do we face lack? How do we face a struggle? How do we face whatever? You fill in the blank. How do we face that? How do you face that? We face it just like Jesus did. He spoke the word. 
Mark eleven twenty one 21 again says, And Peter remembered and said to him, Master, look, the fig tree which you doomed, which you doomed. How did he doom it? He spoke to it. He, of course, Jesus is the word, so whatever he spoke, it was the word. And it withered away. That fig tree was done. Did not have a voice in his life anymore. Another translation says, Yesterday you told the fig tree to die. Now it's dead. It's all dried up. Philip, uh, Philip's translation, Master, look, the fig tree that you cursed, it's all shriveled up. Teacher, see, the fig tree which you spoke to has dried up. Now, doesn't this remind us of Mark eleven twenty two 22, and 23 again? You might say, you've read that scripture two or three times tonight. Yeah, I might do it three more times. Here we go. Jesus replying to what? The words that were coming to his mind about the fig tree having lack. He was hungry. He said, truly I tell you, whoever says this mountain again, be lifted up, thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. The spirit of faith announces victory right in the middle of the battle. The spirit of faith, whatever we're going through, I don't care if you feel bound, I don't care what you do. The word says, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. The Word of God says, you know, Jesus spoiled principalities and powers made to show them openly, triumphing over him in it, and God has given us the authority in the name of Jesus to use the authority of the believer in the name of Jesus speaking the Word of God. Remember, we, we are facing a defeated foe who's just trying to deceive you like he's champion. He's a liar. Come on, how am I going to win in your mind? How am I going to win in your heart? How am I going to win in your mouth? I'm telling you what, you're going to see some change in your life. Wow. Acts 27, 25, last night God's angel stood at my side. An angel of this God I serve saying to me, don't give up, Paul, right in the middle of, of a terrible storm, a northeaster. I would like to be on a small boat in a northeaster. Lord, sometimes I'll watch videos of those fishing boats, and I'll see the, all the kinds of, I'm not talking about, you know, just a five-foot swell here and there, people trying to surf on it. I'm talking about, good Jesus, northeaster. Don't you know things are coming to the, the minds of all those on board? They didn't know the word of faith like we're being taught in the man of God, Paul had to stand up and say, um, listen, God spoke to my heart last night. Don't give up. And he said to Paul, Paul, you're going to stand before Caesar yet, and everyone sailing with you is also going to make it. You better watch who you're following. Whoever you're following should lead you into victory. Now, whoever you're following also, you'll see them go through challenges, but you'll also see them overcoming challenges, so it teaches you how to overcome. This was desperate times. They didn't go on a fast. They, they couldn't eat because of all the motion and all their survival and all the try to keep the boat together. This were days after days after day. They didn't get no naps. You're going to stand before Caesar, Paul. Well, that means he's going to get on ground, Right? And everyone sailing with you, Paul, is going to make it. So, dear friends, take heart. You better take back your heart. You better just watch over your heart. Take your... I and Paul said, you know what? I don't care what we see. I don't care what we're experiencing right now. He said, I believe God will do exactly what he told me, but we're going to ship. And he also got the word, oh, but you know what? You're going to have a shipwreck here on an island. But right in the middle of adversity was Paul speaking what God's word said about the situation. You know, through faith, we can believe in things that we can't see based upon God's revelation that they do indeed exist. God's word exists. God's victory exists. We just have to connect with it. And get that word in our heart. But no wonder, he said, I believe God will do exactly what he told me. Right in the middle of this. Does anybody like go cruising? cruise. Have you ever been on a cruise that, that went like in a terrible storm? Now, how many of you would like to go on a cruise again? <laughs> well, 
Anyway. But here Paul said, you know what, I believe God will do exactly what he told me. So I get back to hearing, hearing the word where Jesus said, have faith in God constantly. <laughs> in a challenge, constantly. When it's good times, constantly. When it's good season, constantly. When it's a challenge season, constantly. Let me, let me just tell you something, and we've all found ourselves with this as I just close here tonight. Is um, all of us have gone through seasons of tremendous adversity, sometimes better than at times where we face something that wasn't so challenging, but we weren't necessarily as tight in the word as we needed to be. You know, I, and, and again, we all have to stir ourselves up every single day. We all, you know, sometimes I don't just, you know, I'm not just getting up in the morning and saying, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm like saying, good Lord, I wish I could lay here for a while. Right? Uh, but you know what? I, I do praise God. And I do shift some things that I need to go ahead and, <laughs> and, and cause things to become more positive. Listen, is anybody getting something tonight? Now let me tell you something. How many of you, uh, be honest now, be honest now, thank you. Be honest now. How many of you felt like, you just said you are at work about 5, 6 o'clock, you said, man, I just feel feel like going to church tonight. No, you feel like uh, watching Price is Right. I don't even know what's playing on TV on Wednesday night. That's like way old school. How many just felt, can't wait, I am thrilled, I can't wait, I feel like coming to church. Raise your hand. Thank God you had a good day. You did? Well, I didn't. Ma'am? Yeah, I am too. But how many thank God that once you got here, it was worth the price to get here, and no matter how you felt coming in here, stand up on your feet. Thank God. He always has caused us to triumph. We're stirring up ourselves tonight. Come on, somebody. Start thanking God for the Word of God. You might start speaking that Word of God right towards your fig tree right now. And you speak that Word to your fig tree and stop letting it dominate your life and stop letting your past determine your future. We curse those fig trees at its roots. That fig tree is going to die. Don't even do that. I was like, oh, no. Here we go. You can dance if you want to. You can shout if you want to. You can just look white as you want to. Or you can look as multicultural as you want to. Do what you want to do. I tried to give space for people. Sometimes it's worship, sometimes it's praise. Tonight, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to thank God for what He's done in my life. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You, Father, again for meeting all of our needs. Thank You that You took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses, and with Your stripes we are healed. We believe that right in the middle of the battle, no matter what you see, continue, Father, to give our doctors wisdom and everything hidden come to light. But, Father, we're going to trust you first of all. We're running to you first. We'll go to the doctors. We'll go to counselors. Whatever we need to do for, for it to help us naturally. But, oh, God, you said have faith in you constantly, constantly. And, Father, forgive us for stepping out of faith. Forgive us for stepping out of the love of God. And, Father, we rededicate our life to be faithful, consistent every single day. Because we realize, and this is not something to put us in fear, but we realize if we're not going through a challenge right now, it's coming. We just need to be prepared by doing things daily. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your ways. Thank you for speaking to all of our hearts tonight. And Father, give us grace and grant us strength to be doers of the word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name.